Good afternoon. This is Attorney James Ratchford, and today I would like to talk to you briefly about the First Amendment. Now, you've seen my Constitution before. I like to talk about it. I like to read out of it. And the First Amendment is one of my favorite amendments. It's one of the few amendments that I actually took a specific class on in law school. Um, freedom of speech was the title of the class, although it's not the title of the amendment. Let me read you the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. So when you talk about freedom of speech, it says specifically, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble. So there's a lot of rights built into that one little bit of amendment. And there's other parts of the First Amendment that are important, but let's just talk about freedom of speech and freedom of the press. First off, these rights protect citizens from the government. They do not impose obligations on, on other citizens among each other. So nothing in freedom of the press says that if I own a publishing company that I have to publish anything that anyone comes to me with. There's no such obligation in here. It simply says that the government, Congress and the states, um, cannot tell me what I can and cannot publish within certain constraints. And there are actually certain constraints that are allowed, such as obscenity laws and libel and slander laws. But generally speaking, they can't abridge the freedom of speech by telling me I can't speak at all. But they can tell me limitations on how I can speak. And um, the government cannot compel anyone to speak. That's a very fundamental process. Fundamental principle in the First Amendment is there's no compulsion to speak. So the government cannot compel me as a publisher to publish your book because as a publisher, it's my right to publish whatever I want, but it's also my right to not publish whatever I want. So freedom of speech does not mean that anybody has to carry your, your statements. And similarly with internet companies, internet companies are basically publishers. So there's nothing in the First Amendment that obligates Twitter to publish Donald Trump's tweets, nor is there anything in here that obligates any publishing company to publish any books by any senators. So right now in the news, we have a senator complaining that this publishing company isn't publishing his book, and he thinks that's a violation of his First Amendment rights, but it isn't, because you have no First Amendment right to have the book published. You have a First Amendment right to publish the book yourself, but there's no obligation imposed on other parties to indulge that right. If he wants to buy a printing press, he can publish his own book, nobody's stopping him. And that's his right. His right is to publish his own book. His right is not to have someone else publish his book. And similarly, with Donald Trump and Twitter, Twitter is not infringing the president's First Amendment rights. The president has the First Amendment right to say what he wants in a public space. Twitter is not a public space. Facebook is not a public space. Twitter and Facebook are private platforms owned by corporations, which are private people. Now, those corporations actually, in turn, have their own rights to free speech, and they can say whatever they want about the president, and they're not obligated to carry the president's response to whatever they have to say about him. And unfortunately, that's right in here in the Constitution. And if the president doesn't like that, he can take it to the Article Three courts. We talked about those before. Um, Article Three gives gives the Congress the power to convene courts and gives the Supreme Court the judicial power. The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. So that is the redress if any of these politicians don't like where their words are not being published. So that's a couple words on freedom of speech. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, again, your freedom to speak does not impose an obligation on anyone else to publish your speech. So thanks for attending my brief video.